All right, so it's on. Wow, it's amazing to have so many people. I've been in a couple of awesome days before, and you know the amount of people is just gets more and more, which is really exciting. So my name is Saul Cabrera. Uh, I'm excited to be here in Amsterdam. It's actually my first time. Um, excited to see many of you again. Um, and yeah, thanks for having me. You can find me on the internet as at Saul E. Cabrera or just in my website. Um, there's more information about me. So I'm a staff engineer at Shopify where I lead the Wasm Foundations team, which is the team uh, responsible for any open source contributions um, for WebAssembly. So we are just focused on improving the ecosystem, uh, like developer experience and performance. Uh, this case in this talk is about mostly uh, performance. Um, I think I'm mostly known for creating Javi, which is a JavaScript to WebAssembly toolchain, but I would like to ch change that today by talking a bit more about this project that I've been working on for the past couple of months, uh, which is Winch. So here is today's itinerary. Um, we're going to learn about what is Winch, uh, why we decided to build Winch, the anatomy of Winch, and the progress to date, and what's next. Uh, my real expectation after this talk is to um, uh, let you know why you could use Winch uh, in your application if you wanted to make it faster and, and the ways that you could use it um, in case that's something that interests you. I'm not going to go too deep into compilers, but I'm going to give a really high level of what happens when you uh, compile your WebAssembly into, into machine code. So um, Winch is a baseline single pass or one pass compiler built exclusively for WASM time. Um, I say this because WASM time already has a compiler at the moment, which is CraneLift which is an optimizing uh, compiler. And this type of compilers work to make your code um, the most efficient code at runtime. So they do a lot of work ahead of time or at the beginning um, of the startup so that you can get a good performance, right? But what the literature says about baseline compilers, if, we, if you look for that on the internet, is that they are compilers that pass through their compilation unit parts exactly once and immediately emit machine code. So this, this, this distinction on passing through the compilation unit parts exactly once and immediately um, emitting machine code is really important and we'll see later um, why. So what, that, what this definition means for, for Winch is um, that if we have a source, for example, that has multiple functions, um, which are going to be the compilation units, if we go through the parts of that compilation unit, which are going to be the instructions, we're going to immediately um, create machine code for those instructions. So I've already talked about what uh, a baseline compiler is, but I haven't said what Winch stands for. So people that have worked with me on this project, mainly the CraneLift and Washington um, members, uh, can, I think, can really agree that coming up with a name for this uh, project has been one of the most difficult things, more than the project itself, I would say. There was a lot of back and forth on, you know, why on how to name this. But essentially, Winch stands for WebAssembly Intentionally Non-Optimizing Compiler and Host. Um, so um, the, the emphasis on non-optimizing here is, is really important because it, the objective that Winch has is totally the contrary of what CraneLift has, which is not being intelligent about the code that it produces, but being intelligent about how that code is produced in a fast way. So I like, to draw, uh, I like to draw an analogy of uh, winch and crane lift by um, having, having this, this statement here that a winch is to a cable what a crane lift is to a crane boom in the sense that you can get very fast things done with a cable and a winch, but if you want like more high level um, or, or more, um, more, you want to do more difficult things, you can you know, uh, rely on a crane lift to do uh, those things. So, I wanted to give a special shout out to Chris Fallon, Alex Crichton, and Nick Fitzgerald for uh, their help in coming up with the name and all the help that they have given me to make Winch uh, the, the project that it is today. Um, to wrap up this section, I would like to just to give a TLDR on, on what's the objective of Winch. And the idea of Winch is to significantly improve the startup time of your WebAssembly. Um, when we talk about compilers, the question that comes to everyone's mind is like, why do we need another just-in-time compiler, right? And it's a very valid question. And I think I've already hinted why, but I want to make it explicit through a series of, uh, of, of slides. And the first one is that we want to optimize to improve cold startup time. Because when we look uh, for the concept of a JIT uh, in the internet, many of the things that come uh, 
many of the statements that appear are startup delay time or the more optimizations Ajit performs, the better code it will generate, but the initial uh, delay will also be um, increased, right? So we will have more startup time. Your application would uh, take longer to start running, to get that first execution. So the idea of optimizing for a startup time is not new. Um, browsers have been doing this ever since a long time. They have very specific tiers to, uh, to optimize for very specific purposes. For example, um, uh, browsers like Firefox and have two tiers for WebAssembly, as far as I know. The first one is a baseline tier, which optimizes to get your application getting running as fast as possible, and then they have an optimizing tier, which is the tier that generates better code uh, for your application. But I think in the case of Wasm Time and CraneLift, uh, Chris, Chris Fallon, which is one of the maintainers of CraneLift, uh, puts it uh, way better and way more succinct in, in the latest CraneLift progress report where he says that the baseline compiler sprang out of compile time discussions in which we realized that fundamentally CraneLift's optimizing design, which has a heavyweight register allocator and a real SSAIR, are too slow for, for some applications. Um, also, um, I think the question still stands though, do I need a baseline compiler or, or do you need a new JIT? And I think the question is, it depends. Um, Radu and, and Matt from Fermin have uh, created this, um, have written this article uh, called The Six Ways of Optimizing WebAssembly. And one of the ways that they um, explain on how to optimize your WebAssembly is to ahead of time compile uh, your, your code, right? This, the general gist of this idea is that you have some WebAssembly that you then ahead of time compile to your target architecture and then you load into your runtime. Effectually, effectively uh, skipping uh, the compilation time once you load your code into your runtime and you start executing it. So this way you can optimize for a startup time. So one can say, well, that's easy, right? Why don't you just use that instead? And I think it depends. You could use it depending on your architecture and depending of, on your needs. But in Shopify's case, we have uh, identified several um, downsides or, or several cons of, of this approach. And I think the first one is dealing with machine code. Dealing with machine code is inherently unsafe. You have, you have to treat your machine code um, with care. And also, um, it, it's important to note that when you compile your WebAssembly to machine code, you are going to be getting three or four times um, a size increase, which means that makes your, uh, you know, makes your application or your code difficult to, more difficult to transfer and more difficult to cache. Um, the second con that it, it's important to take into account is the maintenance of machine code. Let's assume that you, comp that you have a wide range of modules that you have already compiled and you have already stored, uh, but what happens if your runtime doesn't um, maintain compatibility on new versions for those older versions of your machine code? This means that you potentially have to recompile everything, and that's just introducing another process into your architecture and introducing more overhead. We're now getting into the part of the talk in which we uh, see a bit more ha what happens when you compile um, your WebAssembly into, into machine code. And before getting into how winch those, those, those things, it's important to look at how uh, things work right now in WASM time when you create a new module. So uh, this section is a module new one one on how these things are done at the WASM time level today. So the first thing, Let's assume that we have a WebAssembly module that has multiple functions. Uh, what was going to happen is that WasmTime is going to delegate all of those functions in parallel to CraneLift and is going to call compile function for each of those. Um, the important piece here happens in the compile function box, which is uh, I'm going to highlight what all the intermediate representations and all the steps that go on here in order to transform a WebAssembly uh, function into its particular um, uh, machine code function. So the first thing, we have a WebAssembly function, and then we create uh, what we call the CraneLift intermediate representation. So compilers use intermediate representations to be able to uh, transform and optimize that code. So an intermediate representation is just a data structure that represents your code in some way, and these IRs have uh, a specific data structure that allow for manipulations. So the next step is to perform middle-end optimizations. Um, a good example of middle-end optimization is dead code elimination, for example. 
within the crane, if I are crane, crane can say, well, this uh, piece of code is not reachable, I'm just going to get rid of it, and as long as the program keeps its functionality, that code is now optimized. Then the next representation uh, we perform, well, the next process is a process called lowering, in which you go from the machine dependent high level IR to a more uh, machine dependent uh, IR, which is called a V code, is, which stands for virtual registered code. Um, in this case, um, this IR is way more um, dependent on the machine code that we're going to generate. And so we need to create one of these per target architecture. After um, we have the virtual register code, we perform register allocation, which is uh, the problem of assigning values to physical registers in your machine. And this is crucial here because the compiler is going to apply a lot of heuristics to try to um, match those values into the available registers of your machine. So there are many trade-offs that happen um, here in this, in this process. And it's, that's why um, in the Kranev report that I showed earlier, uh, Chris says that this part is really heavyweight. And then once we have allocated all our registers, uh, we can just perform the code generation, which is emitting um, you know, the instructions into their binary format. Um, once we have done all that, what's going to happen is that WASMTIME is going to get all the compile functions that were sent into Kranev in parallel and uh, create an object file, that which is the thing that is given back uh, when you when you create a new module or when you ahead of time compile a module to machine code. Now, um, it, it's time to present how Winch does things and there isn't a lot of differences in, 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 the main, in the first and the last entry point in the sense that we compile the functions in parallel and we create an object file in the end, but the main difference is how we uh, compile its function into machine code. But before getting into that, um, I'm going to present how Winch is structured uh, in, in, you know, in the individual pieces that it has to make that compilation possible. So the first thing, uh, Winch relies on this crate called WASM parser, which is the crate responsible for um, validating and, and parsing WebAssembly. And then we have a very naive register allocator. This register allocator, uh, the guarantees that it gives us is that whenever you request a register, it's going to give it back to you. Um, and, and how it does that, well, it just is, is going to spill everything into the stack in order to free all the registers that have been used and give you that back for a particular operation. Now we have a shadow stack, which is um, a, a stack a data structure that is going to mimic the WebAssembly value stack, which is going to serve to keep track of um, all the values that are live up at a particular point in the program. Um, and then last but not least, we have a macro assembler, uh, which is an implementation of um, instruction emission per target that we support. So in this case for Winch, we support x86 and AR64, which is x86 and ARM, um, which are built on top of a crane lift cogen x86-64 and crane lift cogen AR64, which are the libraries that are in charge of um, you know, encoding the binary representation of all the instructions in these targets. Um, so now we get to the compile function piece uh, of what happens in Winch, and um, here what happens really is just a one-step process in which we uh, get a WASM, we register allocate, and we code generate in the same step, and then we get the machine code. Now someone could ask, can I, can I get the best of both worlds? And um, I guess it depends on what you're trying to do here. But I'm going to speak solely from uh, our experience at Shopify, and we think that it's possible if you have a model like this. Let's say that you have a model in which you're, for example, um, having a functions as a service um, uh, uh, application, and you can think of, well, you get a request, and you're caching your um, pre-compiled modules uh, in, you know, in, a, in a key value store or something, uh, and you get a cache miss. Well, you get a cache miss, but you want to serve your application as fast as possible. You can compile with Winch that is going to give you faster startup times. And then at the same time, create a background job that is going to compile with CraneLift so that your next request, when you get a cache hit, uh, you, get, you can serve that request fast and also have good runtime performance. Um, you could do this while there is no automatic tiering uh, in Washington, which is a thing that we haven't planned yet, but the idea of automatic tiering is that all this will be done by the runtime itself, which is what happens in browsers today. 
Um, other nice properties of Winch simplicity is that it's potentially easier to integrate WASM debugging. So all the transformations that we saw that happen in CraneLift make it so that when you generate machine code, it's really difficult to see where that machine code came from or, you know, uh, track it back into the original source code, which makes debugging uh, more difficult. Um, and it's also easier to iterate on WebAssembly proposals, uh, which is, is very simple. So if you wanted to support a new proposal, it's faster than having to do all the necessary steps in CraneLift to support a new proposal. Now, um, I want to highlight a bit the progress to date. Uh, this project has required a lot of design, thought, and research. So there are several milestones that are, I think, are worth highlighting here in this talk. And the first one is that the integration between Wasm Time and Winch is has now landed as of last week. So you would be able to um, use Winch in in Wasm Time version nine uh, under a feature flag if that's something that you wanted to try out. Uh, just Keep in mind that you know this project is still very early, and the amount of instructions supported are just um, getting there. So, this takes me to the next um, thing that I wanted to highlight is that core Wasm support. Um, you know, before supporting all the instructions, we needed to make sure that the compiler foundations are solid enough, and I think that they are right now, which are giving us more traction to. Um, to support more and more instructions of, of core WebAssembly. We are giving priority to x86-64 because it's where most of the code runs, uh, but we would like to give uh, the same priority to the AR64 backend too because you know, uh, some people use um, M1 machines to develop. Um, so what's next, right? So I, I think the main thing that has top priority is to finalize support for core WebAssembly. Ideally, we would want to have uh, win support all the things that CraneLift supports so that switching can be seamless between the two compilers. Uh, we also want to invest in fuzzing while finalizing support for core Wasm. Uh, I think it's important to mention that Wasm time is very well fuzzed. It has uh, fuzzing targets for all of its features, so we would like to do the same with Winch, uh, given that it's integrated tightly with Wasm time. And then have a concrete uh, benchmark suite, which we don't have one right now. Um, now, yeah, I cannot finish this talk without giving some performance a sneak peek uh, on, on how things are going. And um, just before getting into, into that, when I started this project, I did some research on what would be the gains of using a baseline compiler versus CraneLift, right? So I took uh, other two production-ready uh, baseline compilers, which are the SpiderMonkey baseline compiler, which is the one used in, in, in Firefox. And then I also took Liftoff, which is V8's baseline compiler for Wasm. Uh, for Wasm. And uh, the estimations that I saw here is that by using a baseline compiler, we can get 10 to 15, uh, 15 times uh, better comp compilation times than by using um, an optimizing compiler. So where are we with Winch, right? So. With Winch, we are here right now, in which functions that don't require any optimization by CraneLift are already twice as fast than compiling with CraneLift. Uh, while we add more support for more WASM instructions, we're hoping to, um, to get here, in which the average program is going to get 10 times uh, faster compile times. And um, ideally, when we support uh, all of WASM's um, instruction set, we would like to get here, in which more complex programs, like for example the games that uh, Bailey was showing earlier, uh, are going to get even more uh, benefits on, on startup time, like for example 15 times uh, benefits. So um, I guess that's mostly it for the talk. If you want to contribute to Winch or just know or just join the conversation, uh, we meet bi-weekly. Uh, there is a uh, uh, a repository under the Bike Alliance uh, called Bike Alliance Meetings, and there is a Winch subdirectory which has the instructions on how to join uh, if you're interested in this. So, yeah, I guess that's it for me. Thank you very much. And if uh, some, uh, one of the developers would mind linking um, uh, that repository in the WebAssembly chat on the uh, CNCF Slack, I know everybody here would appreciate it. I saw a phenomenal talk. I know I've got a couple of questions, but first let's throw it out to the audience. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, please introduce yourself uh, with your question. Hi, my name is Rasmus. Um, my main question is why a compiler versus just a straight up interpreter for this? 
Yep. Yeah, that's that's a great question, and that's something that we uh, discuss with the with the Wasm time and Kranif teams. And the interpreter is not out of scope, but the the baseline compiler is the one that has a better trade-off between startup time and runtime, right? So for Shopify, at least uh, for a case, interpreting was going to give us pr probably the same or better startup time, but worse runtime, which is something that we wanted to avoid. So yeah. Great. Other questions? What, what is it for the benchmarks? What kind of benchmarks will you use to gauge the performance? You talked about that's going to come in the future, and do you have a timeline for that? And what would be the mechanics of that, or how will that be communicated? The benchmarks. Oh, oh what kind of benchmarks do you? Yeah, do? yeah, and when? You know, what's the timeline, and how will that be communicated? Yeah, so uh, I think the benchmarks um, under the Wasm time we have. Um, Sorry, not under the Bike Alliance. We have a set of benchmarks that are, are used, uh, which are programs that you know have a are, have a wide range of, of of variations. So I think we're going to just use those. Uh, and and once we get into uh, supporting more of core WASM instructions, I will be. I think that will be the timeline, which should be later this year. I think around Q3, we might see some more complete benchmarks. That, does that answer your question? Sorry. Uh, Bruce, um, we'll follow up uh, offline with that, uh, that question. I know we've got a tight schedule to keep. I've got a quick question for you, and this may be a naive one, uh, but um, are there any use cases here with streaming the payloads in or partial payloads or anything like that? With a compilation, do you have to have everything um, already downloaded to compile, or can you, do, uh, can you start execution with you know, half the, half the uh, payload download? Oh, like doing something like a streaming compilation? Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's something that should be possible, but there are some other crates that or some other pieces that we might need to uh, modify in order for this to work. Like, for example, wasm parsing. We wouldn't need to uh, be able to parse while we stream and then start compiling each of the functions as they come in. Uh, but it's not something that we have looked into as part of this project. Okay, this is really incredible work, and I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, uh, thank you so much for all the hard work and the great talk today. Thank you.